good afternoon, good morning, good evening, or whatever time zone it is, whether you in the world, it is your law and saviour. And some of you may know recently that as of the recording of this, the 28th of July in the year of our Lord Taos 2024, that I have recently read Call of Cthulhu, as in the TTRPG. I've read the novella by Lovecraft many times over the last few years. And I've read both the Investigator's Handbook, which is sort of like the Player's Guide, and then the Keeper's Book, uh, which is like the GM's book, if we use uh, Dungeons and Dragons terms of just a second, those two can piss off now. And I'm absolutely in awe with the system, its mechanics and its overall presentation. And I am just super pumped to play what I'm currently dubbing like one of the most fantastic horror experiences I think I'll ever find in a TTRPG that I can just use to have Lovecraftian inspired horrors or do more generic horror experiences across the annals of time and space. And I'm also aware of uh, Dark Ages Cthulhu is a thing, which um, has got me really excited indeed, because I think that would be pretty interesting to um, unravel. However, rather than just waffle away about my entire thoughts of the TTRPG right now, as I feel that is more warranted a proper uh, review with like proper sound and music and whatnot and the usual format that I do, so if you want some more Call of Cthulhu content, do let me know in the comments below. But I want to talk about one particular aspect of the game that I have seen so far that I think every single games master of any system, no matter the game, the system, whatever, should pinch, outright steal, for their own uh, games. And that, to me, is not balancing encounters. Now that might seem quite controversial to some people, but allow me to explain within this vlog. Most, if not all, I'm actually going to say the vast majority of TTRPGs, when you can create a character, you're going to be kitted out with weapons and armour, magic spells, and a whole bunch of wonderful and doodads, for lack of a better phrase, uh, that's going to make you feel important and powerful. Which in most senses, that's great, because nobody really wants to feel weak unless there's some specific role-playing reasons as to why you may want to do that. But overall, Games want to make you feel that you can take on the world, overcome challenges, and, you know, feel like that you're making improvements to the world around you or your own personal world. And then the GM, in order to facilitate those needs, are going to design combat and puzzles and everything else where they'll put monsters or FOs or whatever in their way. And they'll spend lots of time like making sure that they're in the similar level pool their magic and damage is going to be of a similar output and it's very taxing and it it often it works really well but sometimes it doesn't it just feels a bit cheap to which I say as an experienced games master a professional games master no less I actively encourage you not to balance your games if we take a look about what Call of Cthulhu does with this it presents a load of fucking alien deities that have stats just to present the context of just how powerful they are. Like, the book even says this. You cannot take on a lot of these creatures and expect to win. Usually the best way to come on top is to uh, basically run for your fucking life. Or find some sort of weakness through research and investigation and planning for the encounter, and even then, chances are you're going to get something wrong because in the case of Call of Cthulhu, you're dealing with an eldritch horror the, the very sight of it causes individuals to go fucking mad and so the ramblings for what they are in journals and whatnot are going to be a bit skewed and wrong so it's so it should be encouraged really in any ttrpg session that players don't treat every single encounter with violence or go with what's the most obvious, unless of course it's running away and then get the fuck out there for sure. If we you look at Vampire the Masquerade for a second, just to pull things back on brand, you are kindred and most, well, plenty of the powers in there, I won't say most, but a lot of the powers in there are social based that require you to talk and convince and lie, interrogate, in interrogate and intimidate those around you. It's a very social thing that encourages you to take different approaches and to break down somebody's psyche like that. However, in my opinion, I feel that 5th edition at the moment is pushing towards more a D&D mentality with 
lots of powerful spells, blood sorcery and wacky discipline algamans, or whatever the pronunciation is, to make the neonates, the young vampires who have only been around for a maximum of 50 years, feel like demigods, which is not quite right to me. The horror comes from your personal struggle against the elders and the ancillae that rule your cities, and in some cases the Methuselahs. Where in older editions of the games you have a look at their stats and they appear broken, but again it just provides context as to how powerful and experienced they are. Something that only you can dream of doing. So you can't really, or rather you shouldn't, take them on head on. You've got to use your brains and uh, do something else. Using D&D, because that's the one I love to bitch about a lot, as well as Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Like, very early on, you feel like very, very powerful heroes at level 1, 2, and so forth. And it's often encouraged that you should fight your way through things, because you're, you're hero badass. It's like, why can't you take on that fucking dragon? Or the more memeified, the bard seducing the dragon sort of thing, like... It's not going to happen, really, if you think about it. But going back to balancing, there's a very fine line between something that is not balanced because you really shouldn't take it on head on and find some other way to deal with it, and something that's broken. And often things that appear broken is when you give the weird and the wonderful for the players to use. Which is something that I feel that a recent vampire book that I reviewed that's going to appear on a card right now, Blood Sigils, it presents like these weird summonable demonic entities, for lack of a better phrase, where it has dice pools that don't even exist in the fucking game. And just really destroy the person that's using it, and it just goes against everything that the game stands for. Which on the one hand, is a little cool and interesting that... It brings in the wacky and wonderful, but it also goes against the gameplay's themes. But it feels broken in that sense because of, A, bits of it don't work as intended, or at all. And you give them for the player to use, to use as like a, a, a cheat to overcome things. Of course, it has grave consequences. But as I said, to try and define the, the, the fine line between unbalanced, not balanced because of dramatic emphasis, and broken is a very fine line to cross personally and I know that I'm just kind of waffling away and saying a whole lot about nothing but I think the games master shouldn't worry too much about plotting out every single battle encounter or every sort of thing that could lead to a confrontation with uh, like hours of prep with character sheets because you have no fucking clue what your player is going to do. You've probably seen videos before, like games masters who have like put in hours upon work, like planning this battle encounter, and then the players like don't encounter it. So now that something else has to happen, all that time and prep is wasted because they just sort of reduce it down to nothing or avoid it entirely, which is um, uh, can be annoying. So I don't bother doing that anymore. I just sort of roll dice that's appropriate to the system and just hope for the best because at the end of the day it's all that matters really that the players feel that they've achieved something somewhere somehow. So in short it is okay for you games masters, storytellers, referees, keeper of the arcane lore to present ideas and things in your games that your players cannot defeat and it's all to do really the presentation of how you set things up correctly that the player will feel, nope, I ain't taking that on, no, we can't do this, we have to get out of here, or try and be clever rather than just whipping out your swords and dicks and shields and try and take them on that way. It's a very fine line to cross, and I don't really have a um, one-fits-all example for this because the games are as varied as your imagination are and the system allows. And of course, Call of Cthulhu being a horror game, I do want to exercise the point that we, explain, we play and explore themes of horror and mystery in these games to confront, challenge, and highlight our own fears, um, but in a controlled environment, so we feel safe and don't feel traumatised. So this isn't me saying that, oh, you should go and you know, break your players. Break the characters, not the players. Because horror without consent is trauma, so we don't want any of that on these tables. And as I said, this also applies to more fantasy settings where the big bad or the big bad's pet is just too tough to head on even with your world-ending powers. So, exercise caution, folks, and um, 
respond as and when needed. To that end, I would like to hear the sort of experiences that you game masters or players have had where you have used your wit to avoid something particularly powerful or share your horror experiences, your consensual horror experiences down below. And if you like what I do, uh, consider liking, subscribing and sharing with all that may be interested in horror TTRPG content, particularly that of the World of Darkness. And if I have, um, you know, got you a bit thirsty for a bit more as it were, you can check out some various World of Darkness books in the description below. Now if you purchase them with those links, I get some of the money back because I am an affiliate there and I'm able to provide more content like this and provide you with more lore, character creation dives and helpful uh, advice and ramble such as this because those books aren't cheap and I want to carry on doing this stuff for you and it's all really dependent on the financial support of you lovely buggers but if you can't that's absolutely fine just like subscribe and share with your friends family and your aunt Bertha's mountain chicken and I'll see you next time on the next upload whenever that way will be for you and until next time all hail Cthulhu <laughs>